this is the Andy Hazen and Roxy and I are back. And today we are going to discuss how to refinish your deck. Our deck has not been done since the year 2007 and it was quite a mess. So you've caught us in the middle of our project. But first, before we continue, I would like Roxy to please pan out and take a look at my pre paxson designer antique jeans, which the Handy Hazen himself has decorated. There's only one pair like this in the whole world. And we have needed these jeans over the last several years in projects that we've done together. Take a look around the deck. I've already sanded this down once and I've cleaned it with a material that we'll show you in a few moments as I show you all of the materials you're going to need for this project. I'm going to re-sand some areas just so I can show you how I did it and also to make it better. Here are the items you're going to need to do this project, cleaning and refinishing and staining your deck. This is going to save you money because you're not going to have to buy a pressure washer. Instead, you'll get this nozzle. It's called a sweeper nozzle. And you hook this up where this is. Look over here. These are all the items you're going to need. Here's the difference between the Handy Hazen and other do-it-yourself project sites. Everybody is dressed beautifully. Everything's brand new. And it's just not the real life. We use stuff till it's not usable anymore. However, you'll see one or two items that you absolutely must get brand new. Let's start first with the refinishing items. These are knee pads. Whenever you do a project like this, before you start, sweep your deck. A pair of gloves. After we put on our gloves, we are going to use what's called a vibrating sander. I wanted to use a vibrating sander instead of a belt sander which spins around like this or one of those heavy floor sanders because I want to get to the details of this deck. And this deck, after five or six years of being outdoors, has unevenness between the boards and to use a floor sander would not get the details I wanted to probably also catch on some of the screws. So I don't want to do that. I want to use that when I'm working indoors on a floor on the inside of the house. With this sander, I'm going to use 80 grit. You could use 60 if it's a real rough deck. What I'm going to do is fold it in half. It's cheaper this way. You can buy them that size already, but it's more expensive. So I just buy the pack and I cut it down the middle or just rip it. You don't need scissors. I remember my dad, may he rest in peace, he was a doctor. He never cut adhesive tape. He always ripped it. I'll never forget that. Isn't that funny how you're doing stuff and suddenly you remember a moment from your childhood? This you got to press down and you put it right inside this lip, right there. Now it takes a little koyach to push that down, but you'll do it. Now the problem I had with this as I was working and as I'm going to reenact some of the work I did was that a couple of times this ripped. Once this rips, you got to go by hand. Once we're finished sanding, we're going to use the sweeper nozzle that I put on the hose just a moment ago. Brushes, rollers. The brushes I'm using for detail, I already painted some of the railing after sanding that by hand. I couldn't use a machine on there. Back down to the materials. Here's a roller for a one quarter inch nap. This is for smooth surfaces. So if I use that 80 grit, I think a quarter inch nap is good. You could use 3 8 it wouldn't be much of a difference. And this is an extension cord because you're going to need that for your sander. Here's a little paint tray. I actually used it when we did a project up at YMCA, which you read about a year or two ago. Here's some goggles. You're always going to have goggles when you're sanding. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. And if you're sanding a really old deck, you better check the materials that were used because if they're lead-based, you really want to check all your local ordinances before stripping a, a deck that might have paint that was put on there before 1978, I think it is. You want to get a new dust mask. See? This is a common garden sprayer. What do you need a garden sprayer for doing a deck? Well, I use this material to clean the deck after I sanded it. And this will be the crowning jewel, we hope. You already see how nicely it's been working on the posts there semi-transparent waterproofing wood stain. It says three year on decks. Honestly, 
I have to tell you, since they took all the good stuff out of paint, the lead, all the VOCs, this stuff's not going to last. It's better for the environment, but boy, there used to be the greatest paint in the world. They used to have that, uh, oh, Pratt & Lambert, all those great companies. They used to have paint that would just last for 20 years. And rags. Always have rags. Since I'm going to be standing, I'll use this old, whoops, stick. And you just screw that on there like that. Well, right now, we are going to get on our garb. And I'm going to start sanding those areas that I want to sand, just to show you how I do it. So it's going to be a very short amount of time. And then Roxy and I are going to finish painting this area. And we'll cut back in a little bit later when we start rolling the paint on the deck. I've already sanded each of these on three sides, but now in better light or something, I did, did a lot of this work in the early evening, I'm seeing spots that I missed. So I always keep this folded up handy. I didn't do the other side, but I did three sides of these uh, spindles. Now I'm just dusting everything off basically. Good job, Roxy. A little Ms. Fix It. Excellent. I've already opened this as because you know we've already painted some of the fencing. Initially it comes with a little plastic strip you pull off. You've seen that in a lot of containers. And we're opening the soup. And it's not chicken soup. It's really pretty well mixed. When I first got it, of course they mix it for you right there at the paint center. And then I get a container and I pour some right into a small paint tray. Well, this should be enough paint to last us a while. And I can add to my designer jeans by putting a little bit of this. We'll remember this from years to come that this was the color we redid our deck. So if I ever need to paint match, I'll just take my pants to the Home Depot in case I lose the can <laughs> or lose my mind. All right. <laughs> I'll start with a brand new brush that Roxy's going to use. So what you're going to do, everybody, including Roxy, follow the brush, follow the magic brush. Just go right down like that. Now, I do have a foam brush. I don't have a small one. Foam brushes are kind of neat, but they really wear out fast. So I like this brush. One inch China nylon brush. And it's doing the trick. So there you go. A few strokes up and down, and you're covered. And we're doing the sides. So I'll just get in here with whichever hand is. Your body's just going to know. It's not brain surgery here. It's not like uh, chanting Torah. That takes a lot of good work. And who knows, maybe someday I'll be teaching you how to do that on camera. Which is a good idea since I'm a chazan. But this really sings to me, this kind of work, as you all know. You feel you're overloaded on the brush. Just take it on the sides and wipe it. Just like you're using nail polish. Just like I'm using nail polish. Let's see your brush stroke on that spindle, kid. That's the way. Good morning, we're continuing with our project. You can see all the spindles and the railings we painted yesterday. Remember I told you that we are sort of midway toward the end of our project. This is the um, garden sprayer that I told you about. And I'm actually going to do a small spot right over here where we have all these markings from uh, whether it's bird droppings or drops from the tree, maybe it's tree sap. And I'm going to put a little extra deck cleaner on top of this area and let it sit longer than the five or ten minutes that it suggests. That should hopefully work in to the wood and remove those. But while this is sitting, I'm going to do some spot sanding with this vibrator sander. I use this on the entire deck. I sprayed it down like this. I'm going to pump it up, and soon the spray comes out. And yes, I did actually put some, I tested some of the deck paint here, but hopefully this will clean right through it. And if it doesn't, it's okay. I'll sand it off and I'll respray it if I want. Here's an area where I did not paint. It has those marks. And we're just going to really let that soak in real well. You want to cover it 
liberally. You can keep going over things till you get sugar and you never get your project finished. It's going to be a point where I'm just going to say we're ready to paint this deck and it's going to be very soon everybody. Action! What I'm doing right now is setting up my vibrator sander. Instead of hooking it up just directly like this, I like to tie a knot here. Somebody taught me that too many years ago. And that way you don't really pull it apart as easily. And we are wired for sound and vibration. Down here on the deck you can see various colors and darkness. This is the kind of areas that I want to touch up. I think when I use the cleaner it darkened it a teeny bit. But I'm not going to be sanding the whole deck real carefully. I'm going to be going over it as quickly as I can and then we'll come back when I'm finished. The mask goes on, the goggles come down, and I am the handy cousin from out of space. <laughs> much dried. Keep in mind this is water based. You've already seen that my hands are full of paint. Because I didn't feel like wearing gloves. Okay, we're putting the roll on the roller. Or is it the roller on the roller? And now it's time to pour the paint. You can leave the top on and pour out of a hole on the top. But I'm just going to pour it this way I think once I stir it up. I'm using this bucket. I've already figured out that the roller will fit in there. I always cover my paint because there are always leaves floating around and dirt in the air. That's why I want to get to the deck as soon as possible before it gets dirty again. And now the fun part. This is the part that Roxy's been waiting for. We're going to use two coats, but you've got to do one at a time. This is a simple paint screen and I'm going to put it inside the bucket right here. Whoop, inside the bucket like that. Take my roller dip it in the bucket, then I roll it up the screen just to get some excess paint out. Right now it looks kind of muddled, but this product is going to settle and it will have a uniform look after a few minutes. Excellent Roxy. You got to get all the way underneath the railing over there. We can't do that after we get over here or we'll walk through paint. And we're almost finished the first coat. It's 7.30 in the evening. Time to finish up this little spot and take a break. We're ready to finish rolling the deck. We've already got two coats on almost all of it. I'm going across the wood because the boards are slightly warped just a little tiny bit. And this gives me better coverage. I don't push down too hard on the roller because it gives me lap lines and nobody wants to get lap lines, especially as you grow older. There's nothing wrong with having lap lines though. That proves you're enjoying life. Excellent. The rest of the deck is finished. A lot of work and worth it. And we'll give you a picture of this next time after we get our stuff. Somebody's in a hurry to get over here and see the job. Did you hear that screeching tires? This is the Andy Hazen. Roxy and I thank you for joining us. We refinished our deck fair, semi-transparent, waterproofing, wood stain. Guaranteed for three years on your deck and five years on your fencing. Shalom.